Hello and welcome back. Since the last video, I went ahead and removed the clutch from the motor and put it on the engine stand. And by the way, the clutch looks like it's in great shape. It must've been replaced at some point. <clears throat> um, I also went ahead and I pulled the uh, coils and I also labeled them with the uh, wet cylinder that they came out of. Um, also along with the plugs, also numbered those as well. So if any one of them looks a little different, at least on the wet uh, cylinder to pay extra attention to. <clears throat> and um, one of the things I'm gonna do before I begin tearing the motor down is a leak down. And uh, that's basically for three different reasons. Um, first of all, I, I establish a baseline so I understand what the health of the motor is before I do anything to it. Um, also, if I do find something unusual, um, at least I'll know what to look for during the teardown uh, process. And uh, also, uh, since I have the baseline, when I put the motor back together, um, I have a reference to see if I made something better or worse or if it's still the same. Um, anyway, with the plugs out, um, I can now take a, a metal rod um, and then we'll rotate the motor um, <clears throat> till the piston is moving down and then we'll push a little bit on, on the top of the piston and see if we can detect any play. If we do, then uh, we'll know that we have a spun bearing or, or something going on inside that cylinder. So anyway, with that said, uh, let's get started. All right, so um, I got the uh, leak down tester hooked up uh, to cylinder number one. I think I'm just gonna go in sequence. Um, so anyway, in order to leak down, we need to make sure that we're uh, top dead center on the compression stroke. The best way I found to know whether you're on the compression stroke or not is just to hook this up and then um, watch this meter and see if you have a deflection. If so, that means it's starting to build pressure. So <clears throat> anyway, let's keep rotating this until we see the meter move here. Okay. Okay, there we go. We're building a little bit of pressure there. So now I'll take the leak down uh, detector off and then um, place this uh, rod into the, so it's touching the top of the cylinder there and then keep moving it until I, I see that it hits top dead center. All right, the uh, leak down tester is out. I can put this rod in here and then we'll keep turning until this starts to top out here. Okay, right there, no more movement. So we're at top dead center. So now we'll put the leak detector, uh, leak down tester back in and uh, then we'll pressurize it and see what kind of leak down we have. To get this uh, initially set up, uh, we hook it up to the compressor here, plug it in, and then we'll pressurize the line here from the compressor. And uh, once that's pressurized, we can start turning this. <clears throat> and what we want to do is um, increase the pressure. This is the pressure on the line here, and uh, this is gonna be our relatively t uh, relative test here that will show the percent leak down. So anyway, with no leakage, which we have now because it's all sealed up, we want to move this up all the way to zero. So right there, and it looks like that's right at 30 PSI. So when I plug this back in, I'll go ahead and ramp this up to 30 PSI, and then uh, we'll, air should start flowing through the system. You're always gonna get a little bit of leakage, either through the piston rings or the valves or something. Um, and then we'll see what percent of leak down that we have. And I have it hooked back up uh, to the motor, so we'll bring this pressure up to 30, and we know if we had no leak down at all, we'd be here at 0% loss. That's not gonna be the case, it'll be something less. So let's ramp this back up to 30 PSI. And right there at 30. This is very, very good. <clears throat> it looks like we're only at uh, about 5% leak down. So that's, that's excellent. So anyway, I'll repeat the process for all the other cylinders and uh, I'll take note of these numbers and then when we reassemble the motor, we'll be able to uh, compare it to these numbers and see if things are the same, better or worse. All right, I'm happy to report that the leak down in all the cylinders looked very good. They were all with, uh, in four to five percent. So when we pull the motor apart, we don't have to worry about looking at any valve issues or even the piston rings are gonna be in good shape. So if we do end up rebuilding, we probably won't need to get new piston rings. 
So anyway, um, let's go ahead and look for play in the bearings. And the way I, that I do that is I'll put a rod into the cylinder here and then I'll spin the motor until it comes out. <clears throat> and then I'll wait till it starts to go back in. And then as it starts to go back in, I'll apply pressure to the top of the piston. If it slides down or moves down a little bit, then you know that you have a bearing issue. So anyway, this is uh, cylinder number one. So I'm gonna push. No movement at all, that seems good. So go on and do the same thing with uh, cylinder number three. There it is, on the down stroke, and I'll push. No movement there either. So we'll go ahead and move over to the other side and look at cylinders two and four. Okay, uh, here's number two. Okay, starting to go back in, and then we'll push. Aha, did you hear that? There's movement there. I think this is gonna be our problem. Um, let's just check on the cylinder number four as well. Nope, nothing there. So it looks like cylinder two has the spun bearing. I'll do this one more time here. I'll bring the camera a little closer. Hopefully I can see the movement here. <clears throat> Let's see what's the best angle here. Okay, I'm just gonna push ever so slightly and listen. Hear that? It looks like it may have moved in maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so. So anyway, definitely playing that one. Uh, number two, that's the one that we're going to look at uh, when we get the motor torn apart. So let's go ahead and begin tearing it down. All right, after spending maybe about another half hour or so, maybe an hour, um, of unhooking things, there's a lot of connectors on here, uh, vacuum, coolant, oil, oil hoses, oil feed to the turbo. Um, I finally got it all unbolted. I'm going to pull the turbo off, and I believe I have everything free and clear underneath. Again, there's just tons of connectors under there. This uh, hopefully will lift off. Uh, nope, one more. Crank position sensor. There we go. There we go. It's off. Uh, now let's go ahead and remove the um, harmonic balancer and then the timing chain cover. And before continuing the teardown, I just like to make sure that everything looks like it's in order, uh, at least as far as the timing timing belt goes, just to make sure that no tooths were skipped or anything like that. And uh, yeah, you can see all the marks lined up here, over there, up there, uh, crank, and then the input or intake and exhaust lined up perfect. So no issues there. Um, the other reason for putting uh, all the timing marks up in alignment with number one at top dead center is when I remove the timing belt, I don't really have to worry about any conflict with the, the valves hitting the pistons or anything. So anyway, we can go ahead and continue the teardown by removing the timing belt.
Uh, I got all the pulleys off the front here. Um, now the next thing we need to do is um, get the back side of the timing uh, belt cover off. But in order to do that, we're going to have to pull um, these uh, cam sprockets first. Uh, and then once we have that off, then we'll have access uh, to the bolts that hold on these cross point tubes and that sort of thing. And we can pull the remainder of the stuff off the top. Uh, then we'll flip it over and then uh, pull the, uh, the oil pan off the bottom side and the exhaust manifold. In order to take off the intake uh, cam sprockets or the ABCS, um, we need to pull these caps first. Got a little bit of oil there. Alright, this is uh, one part of the job that I absolutely hate. I don't like these uh, Allen head bolts here. Uh, they're very easy to strip out. Um, this part also requires a special tool to hold, to hold onto the cam socket here. And I like to uh, swing the motor down so when I'm turning it, um, the end of this bar hits this and that kind of holds it in place so I can pull up on the other side. Um, very easy to strip these out though. I don't like this. suspect that this is on here very very tight. I was able to break it loose using uh, this extension on the bar and then going to this side. So there we go, we got it. Alright, um, one thing to note on these uh, intake cams, the ABCS, um, they're a variable valve timing thing and they require oil to come to the front of the sprocket here and so don't get these uh, exhaust and intake uh, cam bolts mixed up. Um, you'll notice that this is a hole in the middle, it's hollow, so it's allowed to pass oil through to the front of this, of this pulley. All right, so we can take this one off. Set it aside. And then uh, for the exhaust uh, cam, it has a different uh, type of uh, special tool required to move this pulley. Um, this is the one for the exhaust. This is the one for the intake. And this one's also plastic and uh, it just fits on there like so. I'll use the same technique. Um, I found out once the hard way not to use an impact on this. If you hold, use this holding tool with an impact, it will start chipping away the plastic on the inside of this, uh, this pulley here. So uh, definitely go back to the manual method and just use a, a long bar. Okay, and uh, this one I just popped loose. Uh, this one is lower to the ground and I, uh, the bar was hitting the concrete and so when I was turning it, it was trying to lift the whole thing up. So uh, I was able just to put a little extension ratchet on here and use the exact same technique. Um, the only thing is I had to uh, take this little rubber handle off the end uh, to reveal uh, the little square there to put this ratchet in. Now we can go back and move the uh, inner timing chain cover. All right, I don't remember this issue being a problem before, um, but it looks like the dipstick thing has to come out before uh, we can get that cover off. Looks like it kind of just gets wedged in there. So, pull that out. All right, uh, that dipstick tube is just really stubborn. It just took a, a little bit of brute force uh, to get it out, but it finally came out. And uh, once that was out, that left enough room for this to easily uh, come off. So, no, no problem there. Now we can continue with removing uh, the rest of the piping on top of the motor and then we'll flip it over and then uh, start work on the bottom side. 
Okay, now I went ahead and unbolted some of the submission stuff on the side and on top of the motor, so hopefully we can pull this stuff out now. Looks like we'll have to pull the crossover tube uh, first to get this off. Okay, I took out the four remainder of the bolts that hold in the coolant crossover tube. So that's now loose. Okay, so we're gonna take that out. Okay. And then one more on this connector here. We should be able to pull this guy out. Okay, I did take all the uh, screws out for the, the whole oil pan on. Um, however, it's very difficult with this uh, the header in here to uh, to get access to pry it off. Um, so, anyway, I'm being real careful not to flip the motor over because when I did drain oil, I noticed a lot of uh, metal uh, contaminant in the uh, drain pan there. So I don't want any of that those metal parts to go back into the motor. So I'm not going to completely flip it all the way over. Um, so anyway, uh, to get these headers off, I'm going to have to take off these um, uh, heat shields first. We've got all the uh, header bolts off now, so this should just pull off. There. And... Another thing I noted here is it looks like the weld on this heat shield, heat shield is, uh, is broke. So that could cause some rattling there. Okay, now hopefully we can get the, uh, the oil pan off. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and pull the motor mounts first. They look like uh, they could also be an obstacle for this oil pan. Okay. Okay. I think I'm starting to get this. some metallic uh, parts down in here. All right. Well, I think I'm going to call it quits for the day. It's been a full day, definitely. So, anyway, we'll resume tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to crack the motor in half and uh, take a look at the rod bearings. All right, that's about all I have time for today. It's been a long day. Uh, so we'll go ahead and resume the project tomorrow. Hopefully get the heads off and the block split in two and take a look at the bad uh, rod bearing. Until then, see you next time.